In 1967, at least 200 members of the Chicago outfit gathered at the Edgewater Beach Hotel's Edgewater Room for a $250 a plate dinner dance. Another 800 celebrants were there as well. Chicago police called it the largest assemblage of mobsters ever staged in Chicago. The entertainment for the night was the mob-owned and operated singer Vic Damone and his 20-piece dance band. At about that same time, Damone lent his name to a frozen pizza company on the north side, which the FBI termed a front for a loan shark operation headed by Fifi Bucheri's brother Frank. Frank was at the affair with Joseph Grieco and his brother, Donald, who also were part of the Vic Damone frozen pizza company on Larrabee Street, otherwise the brothers were loan sharks. The event at the hotel was staged as a testimonial for Fifi Bucheri. The sponsor was the Santa Fe Saddle and Gun Club near 91st Street and County Line Road near Hinsdale, a favorite haunt of Bucheri and Turk Torello. More than 65 detectives and uniformed policemen were held in reserve on the nearby Foster Avenue Beach in the event the mobsters went ahead with plans for a cash raffle, which, at the time, was illegal. It would have been a weak charge that would probably have been dismissed by the court, but the call of the day was to shake up and rattle the mob. Among the guests was Harry Semrau, the one-time Cook County Commissioner and former Chicago Postmaster. When a reporter asked him why he was celebrating with gangsters, Semrau said he was shocked to find out there were gangsters at the event. Who's Bucheri, this Bucheri you are talking about? Semrau asked. The reporter pointed out that Semrau was having a drink with Fifi only minutes before. Semrau said he, in his own words, was greatly dismayed to find out Bucheri was a gangster. When Turk Torello pulled up in front of the club, he started to unload expensive sound equipment out of the trunk, telling the nearby police officers, It's okay, it's only a machine gun. Joseph Iappa, Ross Pryo, Joseph DiVarco, and Dominic DiBello were followed into the hotel by William Goldstein, a big time gambler. Joseph Cortino, former Forest Park police chief, attended. William Wee Willie Messino and Chris Carty were so shaken at the sight of Chicago PD intelligence officers standing at the hotel's front door that they leaped from their cars parked in the valet section and ran into the hotel with their car keys in hand. The man of the hour, Fifi Bucheri, confronted Lieutenant Edward King of the Crime Commission and said, what's it going to be? Pinches? There's going to be priests and doctors and people like that here. Why bother them? Sam Sambo Cesario, a gambling boss in the first ward, was a guest. He would be murdered a few years later for marrying Milwaukee Phil's wife after Alderigio died. Ex-con Lawrence Rossano, a.k.a. Larry Rossier, also showed up. At the time, he was on the payroll as a faux employee in one of Ocardo's companies. In 1941, Rossano, a naturalized American, picked a fight with five black teens who were walking through Taylor Street where Rossano lived. The five men beat Rossano to the ground. A passerby, Patrick Corbett, leaped into the fray to save Rosano only to be beaten to the ground and seriously wounded with knives. Rosano fled leaving Corbett to fend for himself. Rosano went on to bomb restaurants that refused to pay protection and to run a string of strip joints in and around Cicero. Ricca, Accardo, and Jackie Serone drove past the hotel, but, seeing the police, didn't stop. Erwin Weiner, the mob's favorite bail bondsman, arrived, followed by Mike Glitter and Larry the Hood Bonagidi. Bunagidi got by in the mob thanks to his friendship with Mike Glitter. He was, as a newspaper columnist put it, a gangster who was always a day late and a dollar short the son of immigrant Italian parents. He was raised on Cleveland Avenue. He apparently had little or no formal education at all and worked as a cab driver in the 1940s. He served a one-year federal sentence for bootlegging and a one-to-three-year term in Joliet Penitentiary for robbery. He fell in with the mob mostly as a collector and leg breaker, working on the lowest levels of the outfit, prompting a reporter to note that the only thing hoodish about him is his nickname. He got the nickname after FBI agents raided the subway pool hall on North Clark Street looking for a specific gangster. Buonagidi was there at the time, but ignored by the agents. When they left, he yelled out, why didn't they want me? I'm a hood. In 1963, he was busted for running a gambling house at the Ramblers Social Athletic Club at 519 North Clark Street. Only $262 was seized in the raid. Detectives pointed out to the patrons that Buonagidi was dealing with marked cards. At the arrest, Buonagidi insisted that he was an interior decorator, which is how he identified his profession on his tax returns. He also insisted that he be booked under the name Larry Brody, which it turned out was in fact a near-legitimate name he used having somehow gotten a social security number under that name in 1951. 
After DeVarco and Big Joe Arnold went to prison for income tax evasion and Ross Pryo died and Mike Glittermore or less retired because of his bad heart, Buonagidi was charged with making collections along Rush Street for Dominic DiBella. Buonagidi died in 1975.